When we're working with sound, whether it's for a composition or for individual sound design, it's good to think about the different possible characteristics of sound, the elements that help us distinguish one sound from another. From the standpoint of perception, I list five characteristics of sound. Pitch, loudness, timbre, duration, and spatial location. Now, when I ask students to guess these five characteristics of sound, I get some other suggestions. Tone is a common one, which is an ambiguous term that might mean pitch, might mean timbre. And another one I often get is frequency. Frequency is not one of the characteristics of sound because frequency actually contributes to both pitch and timbre, and honestly loudness to a certain extent. Frequency isn't one of the characteristics of sound, but it is one of the physical properties of sound. And these physical properties of sound are related to our perception, but it's good to understand that they're not the same thing. So let's dig in a bit to these physical properties of sound. One very common way to graphically represent sound is a waveform. A waveform is a graph of air pressure over time. So the x-axis here is time, and the y-axis is the air pressure, varying from high pressure to low pressure, with zero here being at rest. Now, when you're working with analog sound, a waveform can be a graph of voltage over time, too. Those fluctuations in voltage are analogous to the fluctuations in air pressure, which is why we call it an analog signal. These waveforms are sometimes called time-domain graphs. Remember, the domain is the x-axis of a graph, and so time is our x-axis, so this is a time-domain graph. There are other ways to graph sound, frequency domain graphs, but we'll set those aside for today. Looking at these waveforms now, let's focus in on four physical properties that we can think about. The amplitude, the frequency, the phase, or whether or not this waveform is periodic. The amplitude is how much the air pressure is changing, relatively. It can be confusing, but amplitude has two definitions. One, the air pressure at a specific point in time. So for example, I could say at 0.23 seconds, there's an amplitude of 0.5. But amplitude also refers to the maximum amount of air pressure that changes over a given amount of time. So I can say the amplitude of the red waveform here is twice the amplitude of the blue one. Next, frequency. Frequency is how often something happens. So the frequency of Thanksgiving is once a year. We all knew that, but let's break that down. Once a year, first we have how many times something happens once, and then we have the amount of time that that happens in, a year. When we talk about the frequency of waveforms, we want to talk about the rate at which cycles are completed. A cycle is an oscillation from rest to high pressure to low pressure and then back to rest. Now, in order for vibration to be a sound, these need to happen quickly, so we want to talk about how many cycles per second something is. And the unit for cycles per second is hertz. So the range of human hearing is from 20 hertz, 20 cycles per second, to 20,000 hertz, 20,000 cycles per second. Next, phase. Phase literally is just a point in time on a waveform. Two sounds that have a different phase actually sound identical, but when you start to combine sounds, the phase becomes important. Two sounds that are exactly in phase will result in a doubling of volume, whereas when you add two sounds that are out of phase, you're going to have different patterns of constructive and destructive interference occurring. Finally, let's think about a periodic waveform. Periodic waveform is a waveform whose patterns of air pressure constantly repeat. So we talked before about a cycle, a period is the amount of time occupied by one cycle of a waveform. It's useful, especially in creating sound, to understand if a waveform is periodic or not, because periodic waveforms tend to have a perceptible pitch, where non-periodic waveforms like noise won't. Of course, there's a big gray area about periodic waveforms, and naturally occurring sounds tend to be a combination of both periodic and non-periodic components. Of course, working with sound, we need to use our ears. But being able to effectively read these graphs of sound can open up more opportunities and give us some agility in designing the sounds that we really want. <laughs>